eight, whichever one as you're doing your suction in the future. Once I have it set between 100 to 150 millimeters of mercury, I'm now going to take my clean gloved hand and I'm going to occlude and make sure that it does not go over 150 millimeters of mercury when I'm occluding it. Now as I'm doing my suctioning, I'm not going to suction for more than 10 seconds. So at most, I'm going to occlude it for 10 seconds to make sure that it does not go over. And I'm doing it intermittently when I'm doing the suctioning and I would be tapping it. So I can look and make sure that it does not go over. It is now at the appropriate suction. Once I've established this, I'm now going to lay this here and beside my patient and on the bed so I can reach it. I'm going to take off the clean glove. I'm going to come back over and I'm going to foam again. I'm going to come back over to my cath and glove kit and I'm going to open this up and follow procedure for sterile technique and establishing sterile field. I've already established that my table is clean and dry. I'm going to open this up by peeling it back without touching anything that is inside of the kit. The first thing that I need to do, and I wouldn't be talking over my field, but I'm doing that for the sake of the video, I need to go ahead and get out the container that would have the sterile solution in it without touching anything else. If you'll notice on this container, there is a plastic piece and then there is just the paper at the bottom. You want to try to keep your fingers down here on the bottom when you expand it and if you'll notice I just push on both of the sides and when it opens up, it opens up with the plastic on the inside. You want to then come and set this off to the side. Now when I'm opening this up, I don't want to be over my sterile field so I needed to have stepped back and opened it and then set it down out here on the side of the table. Therefore the outside of the package is not sterile but the inside is. I then need to reach around and get my liquid that I'm going to be using to pour in here. Again, I would have already checked it, made sure it was appropriate, the expiration date. This one has already been opened, so it should be already date, time, and initialed. I'm going to take the cap off, put the cap down with the bottom down so I don't contaminate it. The label is in my palm. I'm also going to lip the fluid, which we had talked about before, but basically I need to get rid of the liquid that's at the very top in the trash receptacle. I then need to come over here and from a height of four to six inches above, I need to go ahead and add the liquid to the container. And as you'll see, it is bad about leaking. And so if you wanted to have down a waterproof pad or something underneath it, that would not be a bad idea so that you do not contaminate any of your other pieces. As it is, my sterile kit is away from it, so I have not contaminated anything at this point. Now that I've added my fluid, I'm going to take and put my lid back on and I'm going to set it off to the side. If you did end up having to add other liquid later when you were sterile, if you decided you wanted to leave this over here with the lid off, you could do that, but I usually add enough liquid so that I don't have to worry about it. The next piece I need to do is, I need to now come and put on my sterile gloves so I can manipulate my suction catheter. To do that, as long as I have not touched anything inside, then I can simply close the cover again and flip this over, and then I can come and get my sterile gloves. Another option that you could do is bring a separate set of sterile gloves with you and put those on separately and then that way you don't have to be worried since this is such a small kit. In doing this, I'm going to go ahead because I have not contaminated anything to this point as long as I can get the glove apart in a piece. I'm going to do the same thing I did when I put on sterile gloves in the other video. I've grabbed the inside cuff. I've moved back away. I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. And as I put these on, as long as the only thing I'm touching is the inside of the cuff, I'm okay. These are not wanting to go on very well today. There we go. Now this hand is considered sterile. Anything inside the kit is still considered sterile, but I still want to go underneath the cuff of the glove. Again, I lift up and I pull back away. And then I go ahead and I attempt to put my glove on. And if you look, I ended up grabbing it and the glove went on in a different way. I have now let go, but if you remember, this hand is sterile, so I can now maneuver this hand and I can flip this glove around as long as I do not contaminate it to get the glove on appropriately. And as I'm maneuvering, I'm putting all my fingers in here. And if you'll notice, I don't touch any of the glove below the level of my palm. And now my gloves are on and they are sterile and I need to keep them above my waist or at least at waist height with the surface. My catheter is still sterile so I'm going to come over here. 
I'm going to take the catheter out of the package. Anything that I need to get rid of, as long as I do not go below waist level, I can drop it in the trash receptacle. I need to examine the catheter to make sure that it's clean and dry and intact and that there aren't any issues. This is the actual suction piece, and at the end, this is the suction control. Typically, what I do is wrap the suction catheter around my hand, and then I have the suction control here. At some agencies, they will have you pre-lubricate. We do not have you do that. We are going to lubricate using the normal saline that I already have over here. If the agency required lubrication, you would have had to have added the lubrication to the field prior to becoming sterile. Now that I have the catheter wrapped up in my hand to protect the catheter, I'm now going to come over and I'm going to contaminate my non-dominant hand by grabbing the suction tubing that I've already checked the suction on. My sterile hand in my dominant hand is now going to add this to the suction tubing. I'm then going to move back away from it so I do not contaminate this hand. This is now my clean hand. This is now my sterile hand. Whenever I come back over here and do this, I've got the catheter in my dominant hand. If I need the table closer to me, I can do that by moving it with my foot if that's necessary, certainly not with my hand. If I needed to move it with another hand, I could hold this up higher and move it with my clean hand if that's what I needed to do. Always be mindful during a procedure of which hand is clean and which hand is sterile. And if there's any question of what you're doing and if you have contaminated, you need to stop and start all over again. At this point, I'm going to check for suction. Basically what I'm going to do is occlude the suction control and make sure that it is suctioning. Another way to test this is to go ahead and put it in the saline and suction. And if it suctions, then it is appropriate. And I've already checked it before. Now we consider this actually lubricating the tube. That's why we didn't put any lubricant there before. So I have now lubricated the tube. I have now established that suction is here. I can wrap this catheter back in my hand and I need to remove the oxygen from the patient before I get started. I would have already pre-assessed him and made sure that he didn't have any issues with either nostril, that he hadn't had any recent nose surgeries, and which nostril was the best for me to suction down. I'm going to have him take a couple of deep breaths, considering hyperoxygenating the patient. I'm now going to remove the oxygen from the patient. I'm going to come back over and reestablish with my clean hand the suction, my sterile hand the suction catheter. When I insert, I have chosen which nostril I'm going to go in. And on Mr. Smith, I've chosen the right nostril. So what I'm going to do is, without touching the catheter to the outside of his nose, I'm going to insert the catheter in. And as I go in, you'll notice that I'm moving my sterile hand back as I'm inserting the catheter. I insert it along the near wall, and I'm going to go in for approximately four to six inches or until the patient coughs. I need to be real careful with the tube here because this tube should not touch this oxygen. It should not touch the bedding. It should not touch anything. The tube must remain sterile as I'm going in. I also do not apply any suction here on the tube while I'm entering. When I am to the level that I needed to enter, then I'm actually going to apply suction intermittently as I am withdrawing the tube. So I'm going to apply suction intermittently while I am twisting and pulling the tube out. And once I'm out completely, I'm now going to hold this hand up and I'm going to reapply his oxygen with my clean hand. I'm going to move over and I'm going to suction out any secretions that were in the tubing. And I'm going to let him catch his breath and I'm also going to assess the need for further suctioning. I need to make sure that his pulse ox is still within an adequate range, that he is not having any distress. And I need to ask him, does he feel like he needs to have any more suctioning? I cannot listen to his breath sounds at this point because I don't want to become unsterile. I would do that at the end of procedure. Mr. Smith is telling me that he still feels like he's got secretions in there. So I need to wait at least 30 seconds to a minute in between suction passes. And I can go for a maximum of three suction passes. I suction for no longer than 10 seconds per suction. So he's telling me that he needs to be suctioned again. I'm allowing him to catch his breath for 30 seconds to a minute. I'll have him take another couple of deep breaths. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull his oxygen down with the clean hand. I will come over here and again with the suction control. I do not suction as I'm entering. I'm going to come back in 
and replace the suction catheter in the same nair. You can alternate nairs if needed. I'm going to insert it the appropriate length while pulling my hand back, making sure this tube does not touch anything as it's going in. Once I'm to the appropriate depth, I'm now going to suction intermittently while I am pulling the catheter out and twisting it as I come out. Once I'm done with that, I need to make sure the catheter is up out of the way. It's not touching anything. With my clean hand, I put his oxygen back on. I immediately come back over here and I clean the catheter of any secretions that is there. I could do one more pass if necessary for a total of three passes, but Mr. Smith tells me that he feels like his secretions are done. He feels like he's breathing better. I've monitored his pulse ox throughout the procedure. And he says that he is good. So now that I've cleaned the suction catheter, I'm now going to come and wrap the catheter up in my hand. I'm going to now leave this here and I will come back and clean my rest of my equipment up in a minute. But I have the catheter wrapped in my hand. What I'm now going to do is take the other hand and wrap the catheter up in the glove and then take the other glove off and wrap the catheter up inside of that glove. I would then dispose of it in the appropriate receptacle. I would then need to foam my hands. The first thing I always need to do is make sure that my patient is taken care of. So as long as he is safe and he is breathing well and there are no issues with him, I'm then going to go ahead and move on to cleaning up my equipment, which would entail putting on some clean gloves. So once you're ready to start cleaning up, we're going to put our clean gloves on after having already foamed. And usually after foaming, the gloves are a little bit harder to go on, so I tend to grab a larger size because your hands are sticky and they may be sweaty from the procedure from having the gloves on for such a long period of time. So just bear with me a second. So once I get the clean gloves on, I'm now going to come through here and I'm going to finish up the rest of the cleaning procedure. I'm going to put the rail back up to provide for safety for Mr. Smith. I'm going to put his bed back down in the locked and low position. So always make sure before you start the procedure and when you end the procedure, make sure you provide for safety for the patient. I need to be thinking about his positioning. So I need to ask him if he's in a comfortable position or would he like to lay back a little bit. And he tells me he wants to lay back just a little bit, so I'm going to lower his head some. And I'm going to go ahead and get this suction catheter out of the bed. I'm going to replace it up here. Make sure that you always check your suction canister and make sure that it's not full and that it doesn't need to be changed. And you should change it based on facility policy. I'm also going to come over and turn my suction to off. Make sure that is off and everything is good. I've already established that his bed is low and that it's locked. I'm going to check to see that. I'm going to make sure that he has his call bell within reach. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the trash can is over here to the side of the bed and within reach. I would return his table and make sure it is within reach. If he was ready for mouth care, I would provide that at this time. If he needed pain medication, I would also address if he was in any pain and he says he's not, he's fine. I'm going to make sure that the rest of the equipment is cleaned up, so I would make sure and get rid of the packaging and any of the suction equipment as necessary. If the table needed to be cleaned and dried, I would do that at this point too. I would have you know some type of cleaning material to be able to do that. And again, before I leave the room, I need to address the four P's. So I need to make sure, is he in any pain? Does he need to potty? Is his equipment in proximity? And is he in the correct position? And again, finishing up safety, making sure the bed is low and locked, the call bell is within reach, the table is here, if he needs anything else. And before I leave the room, I would need to make sure and thank Mr. Smith and tell him I'm going to go ahead and get this other equipment off of him. Make sure that if he needs anything else before I leave that I've addressed his needs. I would go ahead and take off the clean gloves. I would foam out and then I would leave the room. Whenever I leave the room, I need to make sure that I document the procedures that I've done. I need to make sure that I document how Mr. Smith tolerated the procedure, the color and consistency of any secretions that I got out, how his pulse ox did throughout the procedure, I need to also reassess him when I'm done to see if his breath sounds have changed, both anteriorly and posteriorly, and noting how his pulse ox did throughout the procedure, his respiratory rate and his effort, and to see if there's any change and how the procedure went for him. 
Thank you very much.